All right, welcome back to This Week in Bevy. Now that Bevy 0.15 is out, the PRs that were stacking up behind the release candidate are merging at a fast pace, making this one very exciting week. Changes that stack up like this and don't make it into the release candidate tend to be interesting features, so we really do have an interesting batch this week. The Bevy Remote Protocol in 0.15's release really struck a chord and has already inspired game debugging prototypes for Emacs, NeoVim, eGUI, and more. And half of Pouncelite, the makers of Tiny Glade, gave a talk on their rendering technology at the graphics programming conference titled Rendering Tiny Glades with Entirely Too Much Ray Marching. And with that, we kick it off with fallible systems. Systems in Bevy have historically returned unit. And as a consequence, typical error handling used in other areas, like using the question mark to return errors, hasn't seen as wide of a use at the system level in Bevy as it could. 16.589 details some of the alternative options currently available, as well as introducing systems that can return result. This is an early step towards some big plans for the future of error handling in Bevy, so I'm really excited to see this land and where it's going in the future. On the rendering side, 16.427 adds support for multi-draw, which is a feature that allows multiple meshes to be drawn in a single draw call. There are a number of restrictions for when this happens currently, such as only being implemented for opaque 3D meshes, so be sure to read the PR, which has a great set of explanations for how you can best take advantage of it and where the feature is headed in the future. And bindless is something I feel like I tend to hear a lot about in modern rendering circles. 16368 adds the infrastructure required to support bindless resources in as bind group. The bindless attribute specifies that if bindless arrays are supported on the current platform, not all platforms support them, then each resource becomes a binding array of n instances of that resource. A new example, shader material bindless, shows off the approach. So if you're interested, definitely go check it out. And with the advent of observers and hooks in Bevy 0.14, a question was quickly asked about a potential on mutation event. Implementing this event contains certain challenges around performance, but being able to use hooks and observers to guarantee that values are always up to date is still very useful. 16.372 then introduces immutable components, which through preventing exclusive references, enable fully capturing all values. Since changes to values can only happen via removal or replacement, not mutation. And to really drive that home, that means that the on remove, on insert observers and hooks, in addition to the other existing hooks and observers, can fully capture a value without needing to subscribe to every mutation, which is currently not possible. And back to something a little bit more visual, Bevy 0.15 brought box shadows to the UI, and now we have support for multiple box shadows. Fair warning, we're gonna go bright on the next screen. This multi-box shadow technique is used on the web already to create better looking drop shadows. And Bevy supports scoping entities to specific states. Previously, to enable that, you had to call enable state scoped entities on your application when building it. But as of 16.180, this is now available as a derive when deriving states and substates. This basically enables the state scoped entities automatically for you if you derive it, which is a significant developer experience improvement, I think. And keyboard focus is a critical component to user interface design, and 15.611 introduces a new crate, Bevy Input Focus. This includes a resource for tracking which entity has focus, methods for getting and setting keyboard focus, and a system for dispatching keyboard input elements to that focused entity. And 16.132 adds an initial implementation of entity cloning, which is a new clone entity command that creates a clone of an entity with all the components that can be cloned. There are some performance optimizations coming in follow-up PRs to this one, so be on the lookout for that. And a couple of miscellaneous PRs that made it in, commands.runschedule builds on the world try run schedule to enable, well, running schedules. And gizmos can now be used in a retained manner, which increases performance. Meanwhile, Bevy Color, Bevy Reflect, and Bevy Math all got no standard support added. That brings us to Alice's Merge Train, which is a maintainer level view into active PRs both those that are merging and those that need work. And as a shout out, Alice also recently started dogfooding a game project called Mischief in Miniature. The thread for this one is over on Blue Sky, and it's interesting to see what a core maintainer does when starting a new project. And with that, we're into the showcases. This motion matching demo of a not yet production ready implementation of motion matching is, you know, just fun to look at at the moment, honestly. <laughs> And this console implementation has text and level filtering, deduplication, messages that showed call traces when hovered, and more. This is basically a console and the tracing output shown in your game. This is an experiment in running a Bevy app on a Retroid Pocket Mini. This is an Android-based 960p display 
and has working touch controls. And we've seen these squid creatures before all the way back when they were just prototypes. This squid creature environment got an update to the terrain generation. The grass you can see in the image is a GPU buffer full of positions and normals, and then a few blades of grass are generated for each element in a vertex shader. And honestly, just every time I see this, it looks better and better. And up next, we have Lumina, which is a fast paced online multiplayer game that takes advantage of radiance cascades for 2D global illumination. And from global illumination to something a little bit more tile based, this is a new approach to water and texturing tiles for Architect of Ruin. Up next, we've got a demo for a new flow field based pathfinding crate meant to support RTS group movement and control. The demo showcases the debug UI and controls. And Sync Drift is an interesting single button two player game where player one left shift and player two right shift team up to control the direction of a ship. It was made in one night and including the next morning for the one button game jam. And there's something about it for just small ship games this week. Rusteroids is a minimal pixel art based asteroids like space shooter and is actually the author's first attempt at Rust and Bevy. The source for this one is over available on GitHub, which we've linked on the website. And this won't be the only Bevy remote protocol demo that we see today. This one happens to be in NeoVim for you NeoVim users. And Bevy Space Sim is an open source solar system simulation that has been updated to Bevy 0.15 and now takes advantage of 0.15 features like chromatic aberration. The new version also takes advantage of multi-threading in the orbit update system, which means you can now fast forward 1000 times to see the planets whiz by. And I said the last one wouldn't be the last and this one certainly won't be either. This is a eGUI based Bevy remote protocol experiment. And before we see the next Bevy remote protocol experiment, we're gonna see recreating Minecraft in Bevy first. This is a project focused on recreating Minecraft using Bevy. And the game is currently fully functional with biomes, multiplayer, lock breaking and placing mechanics and an inventory system with a working hotbar. Then we've got a demo of a prototype Bevy HUI optional widget subcrate. The idea is to provide just the Bevy logic to make a widget work for as long as your template uses the defined hierarchy. And onto another in progress crate, this is a hierarchical pathfinding crate called Bevy North Star. And of course we've seen NeoVim and we've seen eGUI and where would we be without a Bevy remote protocol demo in Emacs? This list is showing all the entities with a name component as well as their other components. There was a whole lot of Bevy remote protocol hype this week, so I really hope to see that continue. And that brings us into the crate section this week. First up, we've got Bevy Transform Interpolation. Gameplay systems and physics simulations often use a fixed time step for consistent frame rate independent behavior. However, this can lead to visual stutter when the time step doesn't match the display refresh rate. Bevy Transform Interpolation is a drop in transform component interpolation solution for fixed time steps in Bevy 0.15. And then we've got Bevy iOS Game Center, which had its 0.3 release. This is a Bevy plugin and Swift package to provide access to iOS native Game Center from inside of Bevy. 0.3 brings a new observer based API. And then there's Bevy Heavy. Bevy Heavy is a crate for computing mass properties such as mass, angular inertia, and center of mass, specifically for the 2D and 3D geometric primitives in Bevy's math crate. This is crucial for things like accurate physics simulations and one of those crates where you kind of know if you need it. Leptos Bevy Canvas is an interesting project. Self-described, this is embed an idiomatic Bevy app inside of your Leptos app. The crate provides a Bevy Canvas component for embedding Bevy applications and provides tools to help Bevy and Leptos communicate. The crate is compatible with Bevy 0.15 as well as Leptos's recent 0.7 release. And if you're unfamiliar with Leptos, Leptos is a web application framework in Rust and one that I actually use quite a bit. Moving on, we've got Bevy iOS IAP 0.5. Bevy in-app purchase now supports subscriptions in 0.5 and exposes native APIs via observers. Bevy Replicon had its 0.29 release. Bevy Replicon is a crate for server authoritative networking. 0.29 brings API improvements intended to better support rollback style networking crates. A number of dependent crates have also been updated as a result. And IS Progress got its 0.13 release. We did see a previous release candidate with some of these features. IS Progress's goal is to help you implement loading screens where you might have all kinds of things happening beyond just loading assets, such as custom systems to set up your map, game, multiplayer, etc. Your systems can report their progress every time they run, and IS Progress will transition your app state for you when everything is ready. 
It can also give you the cumulative values so you can create something like a progress bar or other UI indicator. 0.13 is a major overhaul and rewrite of the crate. There's a migration guide in the repo, and this version is actually already powering crates like Bevy Asset Loader for 0.15. And finally, we've got Jammers, that's J-A-M-M-A-R-S, a, -M -M a Rust-based partial Markov Jr. implementation that uses grammars to do procedural generation. There are a number of interesting demos in the Discord thread, so I highly suggest checking this out if procedural generation is something that interests you. In the educational section this week, we have the How to Make a AAA Game in Rust playlist. This tutorial series covers how to make a networked game with functional physics, and there are a number of videos already added to the playlist and seemingly more to come. And that's it for this week. As always, we have all of the pull requests that are opened, merged, as well as the issues that are opened if you want to get involved. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next one.